tire we needed for comparison got shredded in the police chase, and we got no warrant to search the interior. We need some other way to tie the truck to the crime scene. All right, we placed the truck out in front of the Vicks place without the tire track evidence. Busted light ties the truck to the street in front of the Vic's residence. That key unlocks the truck for a look-see. We have a late model vehicle here, practically brand new. Still, I'd say Adar spruced up the interior. Cleaned, vacuumed it, everything but the new car smell.
So this is the memo Aji wrote. Locked. If we break in, the next war in Brassel issue will be on us. Let's see what else we can find. This is a wake-up call. The slipper with the asphalt mark matches the muddy footprint, meaning Mrs. Bandery called on her daughter after discovering Mr. Bandery had bought it. These are emails confirming online purchases a Darsh made using the card. Email confirmations are normally sent by merchants as a safety precaution, but a Darsh had access to their computer, and he snagged them to cover his actions. I'll have Brass check in with Visa. I called Visa, good folks over there, and they said Visa's continuous monitoring program detected suspicious activity. Mr. Dwan was changing the shipping address, sending items to his home and back to India. Not your model employee. Footprint evidence provides a clean link between her home and the crime scene. Plus, we got a possible motive thanks to the answering machine tape. Enough for a warrant. Why do you stupid people insist on wasting time searching my house when I've already told you who to investigate?
In the meantime, my mother is on the verge of a nervous breakdown, and the killer is running free. I don't have another word for you. Cool. We work well when it's quiet. We'll start with your fingerprints. Ugh. I have nothing else to say to you. You're close. Try something similar. You want a different tool for that. You want a different tool for that. Looks like Ms. Bandery has a few more words for us after all. Secret ones, but words. So our Vic was responsible for his wife's blindness.
bloody fingerprint belongs to the daughter. That puts her at the crime scene when her father was murdered. The Vic has a swimming pool. Let's go back and see if we can answer the big question. What's it all about, algae? So what? He's been here a million times recently. This is ridiculous! I've said all I'm gonna say. This is ridiculous! I've said all I'm gonna say. I have nothing else to say to you. That is a painful subject to me, and of no pertinence to this tragedy. Adia? Angry with Bryot? Such nonsense. She adored her father, and he her. We have reason to believe Adia recently learned of your husband's negligence and the loss of your eyesight. You speak of private, personal matters that have no bearing on this tragedy. My daughter loved her father, and her father loved his daughter. The story begins and ends there. And I have nothing more to say. House is separate from the main residence. Don't think our warrant covers it. Let's look around outside. You want a different tool for that. Good eye catching all those insects. Now let's look at catching.
Based on the blood evidence found in her home and our strength and motive for the killing, as well as her bloody fingerprint at the crime scene, I'd say getting a warrant's a slam dunk. All right, all right. My mother was here. She came over right after discovering my father's body. That's where the blood in the sink must have come from. Okay, but that doesn't tell us how your bloody fingerprint wound up in your parents' house, does it? When you learned your father botched your mother's operation, you saw red. You sneaked in and battered your father and left a bloody print on the way out. By the time your mother discovered the body, you'd already washed up at home in your sink. That's all backwards and sideways. When my mother discovered my father's body, she freaked out. Hello, she's blind. So she ran over across to me, covered in blood. I left her there, went over to check on father, and of course took his pulse, which is how I got blood on my hand. Get it? I went back to my place and told mom that daddy was dead. Really dead. She wouldn't let me call the police. I don't, I don't know why, just in shock, I guess. I helped her wash up, and then she had me walk her back home, but then pleaded with me not to stay. Your mother makes a habit of forgetting such little details. My mother looks out for me. Doesn't yours? She's way overprotective, and in this case, I just followed her wishes because she was freaking out. She wanted to spare me, to keep me out of any investigation into this tragedy. But you have to believe me, you are wasting your time down this path. Adarsh, that evil troll, is your killer. We'll ask the opinion of the evidence, if you don't mind. So, you know our family secret? Yes. My mother suffered from a rare form of age-related macular degeneration. She needed a specialist, but my father wouldn't hear of it. Doing so would humiliate him. So he performed a surgery for which he was in no way qualified, and now my mother is nearly blind. I only recently found out, and I was angry as hell. But I swear I didn't kill him. He was a stupidly proud, often cruel man, but he was my father. Nearly blind? Yes. My mother has very limited sight. She's not 100% blind. I have nothing else to say to you. He's on his way to interrogation now. Dr. Pradyut Bandarit was found murdered in his home earlier this evening. Murdered? No, he was my dearest friend. He was to be my father-in-law. Oh my goodness gracious, such a terrible thing to have happened. Are you certain? Could there be, I hope, some horrible mistake? You use such harsh language to describe the smallest of misunderstandings. I am new to your country. The laws and procedures here are unlike those in India. I plan to rectify the smallest of errors upon my return from Los Angeles. Oh my goodness gracious, yes. All has been arranged between the families. I am to marry Dr. Bandarit's most wonderful daughter, Adya. We are both excited to begin our new lives as Mr. and Mrs. Dewan. Adya is excited, all right, but because her daddy was pushing her into this marriage, marriage and threatening to separate her from her mother if she didn't cave. It's a big leap we make together, and of course she has small moments of doubt. But the day will soon dawn when my dear Adya will acknowledge her father's wishes and understand my sincere deep affections. Let me try to think. I believe I was in my office. Yes, I worked late in the office. I'm catching up on my paperwork, you know. I left around 9 p.m. on my way to Los Angeles to visit friends for the weekend. This should be no surprise. Do I not visit on occasion the home of my esteemed employer, my future father-in-law? What memo? The one from Adya, your bride-to-be, threatening to let her daddy know you've been stealing. Again, I, I must point out that what may look to you like stealing is a mere misunderstanding. 
my sweet and lovely Adya has the tiny fault of getting largely excited over the smallest of matters. As I say, I would have corrected these trivial mistakes. And your car was at the scene, Doctor. Maybe he knew about your stealing and didn't find it so trivial. You have such a negative view of such innocent things. We were in the Pandarin's living room when the good doctor informed his lovely wife that I would soon marry their daughter. We celebrated over tea and Mrs. Bandarit requested a fire. At this time I handled the poker to which you refer. I take perhaps foolish pride in the luxury vehicle I'm blessed to drive. I'm meticulous in my, what's the word, upkeep. I keep it up, I keep it clean. I bought a portable vacuum to help in this crusade of cleanliness. Oh, let me think. I believe in my toolbox. Mind if we take a look? We'll need your keys. I'm honored to help you in your investigation. Thanks. I'll hold on to it. Please, I have told you everything. Okay, I've unlocked the toolbox, but didn't find any tools. Just cleaning supplies. My goodness gracious, but Dr. Dewan is neat. We can work with that on the assembly table. This little baby may mean we're now the proud owners of a complete teacup. Better confirm in the lab. The chip from Dr. Dewan's vacuum cleaner is a perfect match for the teacup found at the crime scene. Let's see him squirm politely out of this one. He's on his way to interrogation now. I sincerely doubt this is true. Surely this is a terrible misunderstanding. Here's what we understand. A porcelain chip from a teacup. And 
Your vacuum matches a broken cup at the murder scene. We've got you covering up fraud, your fingerprint on the murder weapon, and your vehicle at the crime scene. It doesn't take 2020 vision to bring you into focus as a suspect, Dr. Juan. Oh my goodness gracious, this does look terribly bad. But I'm an innocent party in this guilty matter. I did not kill my good friend and colleague. You're right, it does look terribly bad. Please, listen. I'm new in this country. It takes much funds to start living in a new place. My colleague's daughter, she finds out in some devious fashion. She threatens to tell the good doctor unless I quit and run away. How could I consider this? I had agreed to marry the doctor's daughter. My family would be disgraced, would be devastated, so I drive to his house last night to bear my soul and to beg for forgiveness. The door I find open. No one answers my call. So I go inside. But something, it doesn't feel right in the air, something forbidding. Still, I go up the stairs to the bedroom. And then I saw him, my benefactor, my friend, dead. I knew at once I will be the suspect. I panic and flee in my vehicle fast as I can. Do you not listen? Am I speaking to the ears of the deaf? I helped Mrs. Bandarit make a fire in her living room. I know her daughter. She never wanted to marry me, but her parents, they are delighted to make this traditional arrangement. It was Adya who objected. It is Adya to whom you should speak. Adya? She was angry with her father. Yesterday they had an argument at the office. I did not hear all that was said, but it did have to do with her mother with something Dr. Bandarit did to or with Adya's mother. Thanks for the information, but you'll need to remain our guest while we check out your story. No more last minute trips out of town, Doctor. Please, I have told you everything. She's on her way to interrogation now. I have nothing else to say to you. Matches all right. Perfect place for someone to clean up after a little dip.
Vic's blood at the entrance of the pool house? That makes it part of the crime scene as far as I'm concerned. Somebody's been staying here. A wife, maybe? Odd for such a devoted couple. We don't have permission for this. Yet. Good job, this looks clean. Blood spatter on this robe is consistent with its wearer delivering medium impact blows. Like those that killed our victim, not somebody just stumbling innocently upon a bloody corpse. This fabric's definitely part of the robe.
That would be a big bingo. Assailant definitely wore this robe during the murder. Widow Banderit's been lying from the start, maybe covering up for her little girl. Let's get her in here. Mrs. Banderit, we found a robe in your pool house covered in your husband's blood. Spatter found on the robe is consistent with someone at the scene when your husband was killed, not with contact with the body after the fact. Your daughter was at the crime scene, and we believe she may have worn your robe when she killed your husband. She did no such thing. I did. I am not about to let you make the wrong assumptions and persecute, much less prosecute my daughter. Arya has been through quite enough. Thank you. You've talked to people. Surely by now you know what a cold, controlling monster my husband was. And as his wife, I accepted this. But for my lovely daughter, Life must be different. She was born here, left home to go to school. And yet, still, he tries to control her, manipulating her into an occupation pleasing to him, forcing her to work for him. Adia seemed content with these choices, however pushed upon her they might have been. But when Priyat insisted, no, demanded, Adia marry a man she did not love, a man with the same old-fashioned notions that would mean disrespect and a slavery of sorts for my precious girl. And then, when he threatened to separate Adia from myself, I had no choice but to stop him. What mother wouldn't? And so I killed him. I put him out of our misery. When I learned that that foul snake Adash was in your custody, I thought his karma had caught up with him. But when you begin to suspect my daughter, my innocent child, I must come forward. Jaya will be a small payment for a life of freedom for Adya. Man, nothing like a confession to make a CSI's day. Even at night. Hold up. Problem. Daughters just confessed to the same murder mommy did. Adya Banderit is in the interview room. Talk to her. I just heard, heard that my mother confessed. She's trying to take the blame from me. Surely you can see that. That she's sacrificing herself for me. Still hazy. Why don't you clear it up? I did it, obviously. I swear. I wore the robe, killed my father. You've gotten the picture, right? How horrible he was to her? She was chattel. That sexist, traditional nonsense was bad enough, but then his pride robbed her of her very eyesight. He was gonna separate mother and me if I didn't marry that pathetic weasel. I couldn't stand for that. For any of it. I killed him. I killed him. I killed him. I'd kill him again if I could. Arrest me. Let my poor sweet mother go. Not that simple. Both you and mom have motive and opportunity. But one of you is lying. So you have two confessions. One murderer and one liar. 
What's your next step? When in doubt, go back to the evidence. Only I'm not finding anything conclusive here. Both the mother and daughter have motive. Either one of them could have worn the robe. Both were linked to the victim's blood. I just can't find anything that points to either of them conclusively. German philosopher Arthur Schopenhauer said, every man takes the limits of his own field of vision for the limits of the world. It's possible you're letting your own perspective blind you to the evidence. Are you seeing something that we're not? Not from here. Go back to the scene of the crime. Put yourself in the killer's place. And remember, even the best of us can miss important evidence sometimes. I wonder if Briss ever gets tired of being right. If I were standing where the assailant did and struck the victim, then when the weapon came back, the blood cast off would fly right because I'm right-handed. From this position, spatter clearly swings to the left, hitting the wall with no swings to the right. Our killer is left-handed. Now we just have to find evidence to determine whether the lefty is mother or daughter. She's on her way to interrogation now. I have nothing else to say to you. She's on her way to interrogation now. I cannot think of anything I haven't told you already.
Based on the slant of the letters and the direction of the smudge marks, we can safely say that Mrs. Banderee is left-handed. Place settings in the daughter's kitchen indicate one is right-handed, the other left. Crossword handwriting says the mother was the definite lefty. We have our killer. Hey, what's up? She's on her way to interrogation now. Your daughter also confessed to the murder of your husband, but the evidence agrees with your version. Of course it does. She is innocent, trying to protect me. We know, Mrs. Banderee. Your daughter is right-handed, but Mr. Banderee was killed by a left-handed person, like yourself. I owe you thanks. I know I said some cruel things to you before, and I am sure my daughter has done the same. But I thank you for finding the truth in this, and not allowing to stand the injustice of my daughter being blamed for my act. She should be free. She has been inside the prison my husband built for her long enough. No, I won't. I told you. I explained it. Weren't you listening? I killed my father, and I'd do it again. Maybe you would do it again if you had the chance. Only you didn't do it in the first place. Forensics tells us your father's killer was left-handed, like your mother. You're right-handed, meaning there's little chance you could have wielded that fireplace poker. Much as it may disappoint you, Adya, you're innocent. Your mother can no longer bear her controlling husband, so she grabbed the fireplace poker and for once took charge of her own life, and his. Then she went to your house and you helped her wash off before she hid the robe at the pool house. All right, all right. But before you go any further, stop and think. She didn't do this for herself. She did it to protect me. All those terrible years, she never once complained, never challenged that demon. My father was the monster here, my mother the victim. To be pitied, not tried for this, this necessary execution. We did fine. Great, in fact. Nice having another sharp pair of eyes. Justice may be blind, but CSI's gotta see every detail. Check in with Gris for your evaluation. All right, here's your evaluation. For evidence, there were a few items you didn't find, or fully process. For hints, you didn't need any at all. And, at the end of the day, you followed the evidence to a clear conclusion. Can't argue with that. Good work. You did very well, though as I noted, there's still some room to improve. I'm giving you an above average grade. And by the way, thank you for all the new specimens you found for my collection. I'm recommending you for an extra bonus. Great hunting. <laughs>